Hey guys, I am back with another bullet journal set up for you guys in my A6 Stylogy notebook that I am using as a bullet journal. I am setting up the month of June for 2020. I am back to using my trusty Lilac Tombow, which is the number 620, my uni Jetstream ballpoint pen in 0 0.7, and of course a ruler. I will have all those items linked in the description box for you if you want to check them out. So for the month of June, I wanted to keep things pretty simple and I feel like every month I end up doing just a little bit of a different layout, but I'm really excited for June to come to use these spreads. So I opted to do a horizontal layout for my monthly calendar so I could get the full seven days on one page. So these squares are three by three across and I'm using the bullet nib and my ruler to draw them out. So 21 squares for the vertical lines. And then I am just drawing the exact 30 days in June. So you'll see I just left two boxes in the fifth row for the 29th and the 30th. And I'm really excited to see how this works out. And then using that same lilac Tombow, I am lettering in to the best of my ability June uh, using the brush tip nib. So just kind of keeping it simple. I love that this color is sort of understated. It still shows up really well in person on the Stalogy, but it doesn't draw your eye away necessarily from the things that I need to be doing. On the right hand page, I am going to be setting up, um, I believe it's called the Alistair method of a rolling weekly. I've just been really inspired, particularly from Bandit and Cass here on Instagram and YouTube. I will link her uh, Instagram and her channel down below. She has been implementing these a lot lately and I've been thinking about my bullet journal spreads and if <laughs> Well, honestly, I typically have a lot of redundant information, and I think that this is going to be a good way to sort of condense my pre-planning into a one-page spread. So I went back in and I numbered in the days of the week on my calendar layout, and then now I'm adding in the week numbers that correspond with how I have set up June. So for me, that is weeks 23 through 26. And I'm not the best at explaining this method, but essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the task column on the right-hand side of the page as a monthly inbox. So anything that I want to accomplish during this month will end up there. And then I will create a swatch under the corresponding week on the left hand side of the page of when I would like to get something done but either way I will cross it off or migrate it when I do accomplish it. So I'm planning on doing the swatch and then drawing a line using that same Tombow dual brush pen to just sort of show when I want to do something and the line just helps me follow that along to the particular task so it's a little bit easier for me to read. So I'm excited to give this layout a go for the month of June. Flipping the page, we are going to be setting up my routines or my habit tracker for June. In May, I sort of separated out my goal-related tasks versus the things that I kind of track every day. And this month, I'm trying to lay things out in the order that I want to do them on a daily basis because I think that's going to subtly help me create a little bit more of a regular routine by doing these things in a particular order. So I'm starting out by writing the dates 15 through 30 on the right hand side of the page and then I'm using my Tombow to create a line underneath that to create sort of a header and then I'm numbering backwards on the left hand page 14 all the way back to the first. I find this to be the easiest way for me to get things more or less centered on my page. And then I'm going in with my uni jet stream and I am writing down the habits and routines that I am trying to accomplish for the month of June. I really like habit trackers. They help me stay focused. They keep me, um, honest with myself, if you will. I prefer to look at my habits sort of like one week at a time versus at a month, but there's something about the A6 Stylogy and I think it's just the smaller layout that helps me not be as overwhelmed seeing things on a monthly basis. So this layout for habits has ended up really working for me in 2020, so I didn't really see a need to switch it up any further than I already have. I'm pulling back out my ruler one more time just to create one more line to separate the task 
names um, from where I will be checking them off. Below that, I am, uh, or above that rather, I'm marking my Mondays using a dot from my Tombow Dill brush pen, and it would not be a Lindsay Scribbles YouTube video <laughs> if I didn't pull out the white out because I realized that I was marking Sundays instead of Mondays and that really throws me off so I just use some white out quick. The one I'm using is from Tombow but any white out works. This one does blend pretty well with the Stalogy paper though so I don't mind pulling it out as needed. And then I just remarked the proper day so that I can tell which day is the beginning of a new week when I'm looking back at this. Below my habit tracker, I'm filling out my weekly habit tracker. So these are the things that I try to do on a weekly basis, but I don't need to do on a daily basis. So this is things like water the plants, transfer our income to the correct accounts, clean the house, wash towels, you know, etc. Things like that that I'm trying to make sure that I'm doing in on a regular basis to kind of keep the household in order. And then once again, I am putting in the corresponding week numbers. So again, 23 through the 26th week of 2020 for me. And then I'm using my dual brush pen again just to draw my lines to separate them out. And I really like how clean and simple that was to set up. The next spread I am going to do is my gratitude log. Gratitude has been really important to me this year and I feel like with all the time at home and all the days bleeding together, taking a moment each morning to sort of make sure I review the day before and think about what actually happened and find one good thing to write down from that has been a really good practice for me. It keeps me positive. It's something I try to do in the morning and it just sort of helps me and I don't know, separate my days right now, if that makes sense. So definitely something I am going to continue. So I just, again, numbered one through 30 across the two page spread, and I'm going to draw a line with my dual brush pen again to separate the numbers from where I will actually write the gratitude. This did leave me a fair amount of space at the bottom. So I'm contemplating doing like a favorite monthly highlight or memory or something like that at the bottom part of that second hand page. So I'm adding a new tracker to my bullet journal setups. I did one of these for May and I've had a lot of fun with it. And this is my Animal Crossing tracker. I tried setting up various different trackers and realized that I didn't really need any of that information. But the one piece of information that I found both helpful and fun to track was turn up prices. And I'm just doing a same horizontal calendar layout just like I did for the June calendar layout. So this is a three by three square and I just did it for the full four weeks since the last two days of June. I'll want to see with the rest of the week, which I'll end up setting up with my July by set up. But really what I do here is I will write down what I purchased my turnips for on Sunday and then the AM prices versus PM prices. This just helps me go back and use the different tools to see like what kind of pattern I can predict for the week. And then on the right hand side of the page, still doing a horizontal layout. I just numbered one through 31 and that's sort of where I log like a highlight or something I need to remember to do for the next day. I play with a lot of my friends online and maybe I'll pick up something for them at the shop and I need to remember to give it to them so I'll mark that down or if I end up playing with friends or something like that I will log it just because I think it's kind of fun to go back because right now all of my social time has been virtual and a good chunk of that has been through Animal Crossing which is fun I guess it's creating a lot of good memories so I wanted to write them down because I think it's something I'm going to want to look back at. And finally, the last spread that I am going to do in my June setup is my finance trackers. I really just create two columns. The only things I keep track of on paper are my fun money spending, so frivolous you know, spending that I have a set amount for, and then the debits and credits, which are just things I get charged to the wrong account that I need to go back in and adjust when we're balancing our finances at the end of the month. So nothing too crazy here, but I just did um, a swatch for each section using that Tombow. They're about 13 rows or columns a piece, depending on which way my planner is oriented. And then at the top, I am writing June finances. 
So that is my June setup. It is pretty simple. I did go ahead and add my Coffee Monsters Co. tab to it, but I am excited to jump back into bullet journaling a little bit. I have made these spreads a lot simpler. This whole thing only took me about 20 minutes to set up. And thank you so much for watching, guys. If you want to see what some of these spreads look like at the end of the month, head on over to my Instagram where I tend to post pictures of these regularly. But thank you so much for watching and I will catch you next time.